Hey everyone, before I cover the latest results and tennis news on court, I want to briefly discuss Serena Williams' latest social media post. Serena made a heartbreaking video where she revealed that her friend and former physio Esther Lee has pancreatic cancer. Lee, who worked with the Williams sister for six years, was diagnosed last year. Williams discussed this condition to raise awareness for the Los Angeles Cancer Challenge 5K Walk Run, where Esther will be the honorary starter. Okay, so. Last year, my friend Esther was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, and she's been by my side whenever I needed her. Um, I don't think I can do this. This is going to be too hard for me. So my dear friend Esther has been a huge part of my own health journey, and now she needs our help as she battles pancreatic cancers. So Esther has been named the honorary starter for the LA Cancer Challenge 5K Walk Run on October 31st in UCLA benefiting the um, Hirschberg Foundation for Pancreatic Cancer Research. My family and I have joined Team Esther in support of my friend and everyone fighting this disease. So please join us as we raise awareness and race towards a cure by finding and advancing critical research. So register to walk virtually like me. I'm walking, I can't run. <laughs> Um, okay, so register to walk virtually like me or participate in person and make a donation. Um, let's make sure no one fights this disease alone. Um, I'm not looking at the camera and reading off script because it's very difficult for me to even talk about this. So um, join me and Esther will be there too. So it's really exciting. It was hard to watch even Serena make that video because you can tell how much Esther means to her as a friend. I remember seeing her in Serena's box in 2012 and 2013 especially, and I'm truly sorry and saddened that she's going through this. Esther did reveal that she's progressing and looks to continue her battle towards being cancer free. For more information about joining the walk run or if you want to donate to the cause, visit support.pancreatic.org. Now for a bit lighter news, Serena and Venus sat down with Will Smith to unveil an alternative trailer for King Richard, including an original song from Beyonce titled Be Alive. The film, which portrays Richard and Orison's parenting of the sisters, will be out in theaters on November 19th. I can't wait to watch it because I get inspired every time I see the trailer. Meanwhile, Novak Djokovic apparently has some good news, as unvaccinated players will be permitted to enter Melbourne to play the 2022 Australian Open. Ben Rothenberg of the New York Times shared a leaked confidential email sent to the WTA from Tennis Australia, which basically says that fully vaccinated players won't be required to quarantine ahead of the Open, while unvaccinated competitors must do 14 days of the hotel quarantine. Because Victoria's vaccination rate is steadily rising, fully vaccinated players can arrive at any time after December 1st and won't deal with any ongoing restrictions, being free to move however they like. Meanwhile, unvaccinated players can also arrive after the 1st of December, but of course must quarantine and do regular COVID tests. The email also revealed that Aussie Open qualifying will be held in Melbourne, which is a contrast from early reports of them being held in Doha again. The statement basically says, forget about those rumors, here's the real truth, and I think that's interesting. Honestly, I am surprised that these are the circumstances because a lot of officers were making it seem like players could definitely not arrive unless they were vaccinated. But apparently, Craig Halley's been doing a lot more work behind the scenes than we realize. This is very promising, especially for the unvaccinated players, but I still don't think everything is set in stone, at least until an official announcement is made by the government. Now, the email did say that the details needed to remain confidential, but Ben clearly didn't get the memo. Victoria Azarenka actually called him out for this tweeting. The fact that this was shared to players confidentially and within two hours, Ben, you are posting this. You clearly haven't read the email, unless I missed the point that you are a WTA player now. Rothenberg responded, Vika, this is my job. If you have an issue with it being leaked to me and at least one other reporter, blame the leakers. Azarenka then shot back, I think we will definitely do that. I always respect the reporters and what you guys do, without a doubt. However, this is not the case here. It's your duty to report things if they are not reported, but to leak information before it's officially announced is clickbait. Regardless, I'll make sure to update y'all on whenever an official announcement is made by either the tournament or the government. Anyways, focusing on the latest results, Yannick Center is now 5 for 5 in ATP Finals, dominating Diego Schwartzman 6262 to an Antwerp. Four of his five titles, by the way, have come in 2021, which ties him for the second and most won this season. He looked dominant in Belgium, not dropping a set all week. 
He'll rise to a career high of 11 tomorrow and puts himself in ATP Finals contention, currently sitting at 9th behind Hercoc and Rude. Meanwhile, in Moscow, Aslan Karasev returns to the winner's circle after beating Marin Chilich 6-2-6-4 to claim the Kremlin Cup. He becomes the third Russian in a row to win the title after hatching off from Rublev. This is his second career title and will also reach a career high Monday ascending to 18 in the world. It's good to see Karasev regain his form because he seemed to be going through a bit of a rough patch since the Belgrade final in April. And on the women's side, Anat Kontovat fought back from the brink of defeat to beat home country hope Ekaterina Alexandrova 4-6-6-4-7-5. Alexandrova came out and played tremendously, going up 6-4-4 love. However, Kondovay, after finally breaking, totally turned it around, winning six games in a row to send it to a decider. The Russian remained strong though and weathered an intense decider to get first blood and serve for the match at 5-4. Kondovay though continued to battle and once again made a late surge to seal a victory in 2 hours and 23 minutes. Annette has been very, very impressive these past few months. Earlier this season, she struggled a bit, but since partnering with Dmitry Tursunov in August, she won three of her four career titles since then, winning Cleveland, Ostrava, and now Moscow. Also, during her Moscow run, she clobbered Garbina and with the 1-on-1 one -one in the quarters, which was a shocking display. With these stellar results, she matches her career high of 14 come tomorrow. Meanwhile, American Only claimed her first WT title in Tenerife, defeating Camila Osorio 6-1-6-4. This was a comprehensive performance from Lee for pretty much all 70 minutes. She was the steadier of the two, making 15 less unforced than the Colombian. On continues to top her previous career high, shooting up to number 48 in the world. This was Lee's second career final, but she couldn't even play her first, the Grand Prix Trophy in February. That final went unplayed due to a scheduling delay, but coincidentally, she would have faced Annette Kontovite. Now, Kontovite still has a chance to qualify for the WT finals in Guadalajara after world number one Ash Body withdrew yesterday. Ash in her statement said, It was a difficult decision, but I need to prioritize my body and my recovery from our 2021 season and a focus on having the strongest preseason for the Australian summer. With the ongoing challenges of traveling back to Queensland and the quarantine requirements, I am not willing to compromise my preparation for January. My focus is now on the Australian summer and doing everything I can to win the Australian Open. I can't wait to play at home again. Now, despite failing to defend her final title from 2019, Barty will end 2021 as the world's top player, a feat she's accomplished now for the third consecutive year. Only Steffi Groff, Martina Navratilova, Chris Ever, and Serena Williams have done this. I don't think anyone was surprised by this decision for Ash to pull the plug. It's been a long season for her, not being home since February. She definitely proved her status as the world's best player, winning five titles, including that coveted Wimbledon dish. Congrats, Ash, and I wish you a nice, relaxing off-season. Now, focusing on the WT Finals, which starts on November 10th and currently looks like this, Barty's withdrawal means that Igor Svantec, Garbina Muguruza, and Pavel Dosa qualify, along with Sabalenka, Krejcikova, Pliskova, and Sakari. Jabir and Kontavai are the only ones who can take that final 8th spot, but Onus is currently in the league with a 139 point advantage. If Annette wins the title in Romania next week, she qualifies. Anything other than that sends the Tunisia into the Elite 8. Jabir really could have sealed her spot by now, but she was forced to retire during her opening round match in Moscow due to an elbow injury. That issue also forced her out of next week's Carmichael Ladies Open in Italy. Looking at the Transylvania Open draw where Annette is playing, Simona Halep headlines, as does US Open champ Emma Raducanu. Halep and Raducanu could meet in the semis, but Tomjanovic could pose a threat for Simo in the quarters, while Kostya can do the same for Emma. Focusing on the opening round though, Halep meets 23-year-old countrywoman Elena Gabriela Roos, who claimed her maiden title in Hamburg a few months back. Meanwhile, Raducanu faces veteran 123rd ranked Polona Hercog, who hasn't won two matches in the same tournament since Roland Garros. This would be a great opportunity for Emma to win her first WTA Tour match, and if she does lose, it'll be a bigger cause for concern than the Sashtovic stumble at Indian Wells. I think Kontovite has a decent role to the final. She's better than all the women in her half, so if she still has a full tank left, she can definitely go all the way. Meanwhile, in Vienna for the Esther Bank Open, there's a loaded field comprised of Cici Paz, Vera, and Berrettini as the top seeds. There are some incredible first round popcorn matches with Cici Paz going up against Dimitrov, Casper Ruud versus Lloyd Harris, Serena against Riley Opelka, Hercoc versus Murray, among others. 
things likely won't get any easier, as the second round matches look pretty mouthwatering as well. Griker can definitely beat Stephanos, as he's hot at the moment, coming off a strong steamy showing at Indian Wells. Plus, he beat Stephanos in Vienna last year. I think out of the top seeds, Verov has the best section, as his projected quarters opponent Felix look very off in the desert. Looking at the smaller tournaments, that women's event in Italy has a weak field, with Lumilia Samsonova being the top seed. Meanwhile, in St. Petersburg, Krasov looks to go 2 for 2 in Russia, potentially facing the likes of Rublev, Shapovala, Fritz, or Bartista Agud. Ending the video on a a high note, I want to congratulate Jessica Pegula on getting married this weekend to her fiance Taylor Gahagan. The two had a nice ceremony at the Biltmore House in Asheville, North Carolina. That's all for this video, and let me know in the comments what you think about the email plus all the results from this week. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.